What's going on everybody? So I'm out here pulling my tree stand. Uh, last time I was out here I actually forgot my tree stand lock. The key to my tree stand lock. Gotta love that. Had to make a second trip. But I tell you what, there's worse things I could make a second trip for other than walking back in the woods and pulling this tree stand again. And this is the one that I shot my 170 out of. So every time I climb this tree, I'm just I'm reminiscing the hunt. So I would absolutely love it. So while I was out here, I actually had a thought for you guys. Something I want to talk about was main mistakes I see non-resident hunters make while they're out in the woods. So I see a lot here in Missouri. We got a lot of non-resident hunters. And I wanted to touch on this because it's something that I've been working hard on not making throughout the years. But can easily be made because it's a non-resident hunt and you've got the pressure on yourself to make it happen. So first off here, if you wouldn't mind, please go down, hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps us out by building our channel and reaching more people with our videos and we would greatly appreciate and we thanks, we appreciate all you guys' support. So let's get into this. So the two main topics here is the lack of preparation and the lack of calculated aggression. Those are the two main reasons that a lot of guys miss the success during not only their own hunt but they also mess up other people's hunts by messing up the property itself so when we're going out on a non-resident hunt I don't know about you guys but that's a lot of money for the tag a lot of time and money for the trip itself and I want to be as prepared as possible going into that hunt because I want to be successful, right? If I'm putting that much into it, that much investing into that hunt, I want to be as successful and prepared as possible. So why would I not take the time and spend a little bit of extra money, a little bit of extra time, and spend one weekend at that property during the spring? One weekend. Go scout it. Find the main bedding core areas, find the main travel routes and and sign, the concentrated sign, everything you need to look for for hunting and where you want to where you want to hunt. That way you can focus on it when you get to the actual hunt and figure out what's fresh, right? But the biggest thing there is figuring out where you need to stay out of. Find those core areas and make sure you aren't accidentally messing up your hunt because now because you don't know where they're bedding now you do so you can be calculated with your aggression right so prepare that's the biggest thing we hunt every property whether it's six and a half hours away or 20 minutes away the exact same why would we change a system just because of distance of travel that just doesn't doesn't make any sense to me so we've built something that works for us and we're going to stick to it. And that includes spring scouting. That Our main port is spring scouting. So be prepared. And here's what I mean by calculated aggression. I see, I see this a lot. Is that I'll be there hunting and I'll see a lot of regular movement. A lot of consistent regular movement. Good bucks. Lots of does. And, and they're kind of patternable now. And... It's all very consistent daylight movement. I'll leave for the weekend, go to work. I'll leave for the weekend, go to work, and then I'll come back that next weekend to hunt, excited because I'm starting to get more into the rut. And I don't know where the deer went. The sign has dried up. The deer are just gone. And I can't figure out what the reason is. And so I start looking around, um, and I realize that a huge group of non-resident hunters have moved in and of course as hunting pressure increases the deer are going to change right that they're going to adjust slightly and it depends on how hard the hunting pressure has been getting hit but what I see is that these same guys are in areas where I was currently seeing deer they are not seeing deer at all and what they're failing to miss is that the reason they're not seeing deer is because they haven't taken the steps necessary to make sure they don't run their hunt. And because now they aren't seeing deer where it was easier to see deer, easier to find where the fresh sign was, they quit seeing deer because their scent control wasn't on point and their access was terrible, chose the short route of access, and in turn, a lot of times having to go right next to or through 
main bedding and the I, that's the number one way to run a hunt and a property is by doing that exact thing so um, in turn what happens is now that they aren't seeing deer they now push harder and deeper and get deeper into these bedding areas and now what they're do doing is they're spreading more scent and more intrusion and they're not being smart about their aggression so you push the deer into deeper into the bedding areas made them shift slightly right now because you pushed harder now you're pushing them off of property they will no longer be on property so your hunt now is completely run for however much time you're on on property and also nobody else is now seeing deer because you just trampled over every single bedding area on the property and you spooked everything out so I get it though you we feel pressure going into the, those hunts you want to make it happen because we don't want to go home with an unfilled tag I get it but being overly aggressive is not the right tactic either so go into it with a calculated aggression be smart about what what you're doing and be prepared now don't don't be afraid to go get them right don't be afraid to go get them but don't be stupid about it either to where you actually mess up your own hunt and everybody else's hunt so i hope that helped you guys that's kind of a a little bit of rant of mine, but something that is actually very important to really th think about because it really messes up um, public properties for not only your hunt as the non-resident, but the residents' hunts as well because there are they are hunting the property a lot more calculated than a, than we tend to as not non-residents. So I like to hunt every single property the same with a calculated aggression. Go get them, but be extremely smart and don't mess it up before you get the opportunity at that deer. So I hope that helped you guys, give you a little bit of an idea. Don't be afraid to spend that one weekend to go get prepared. That way this next fall you can be more successful. So thanks for watching guys. Please go down, hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you on the next video.